Good morning. Good Thursday morning. Uh, this morning I have a little devotion. Sorry, I'm a little tired. It's been a long, long couple days, long week. But I wanted to hit a devotion based on our gospel list this morning, or this weekend, I apologize. Uh, that is one that is, uh, as we talked in our uh, um, lecture I study yesterday, a very uh, helpful one to understand why there's sometimes these obscure stories or accounts in the Old Testament that kind of seem strange in and of themselves. And at the same time, uh, all are meant to point us to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I got to say, being hit Galilee now for five years, I've experienced some very interesting things when it came to snakes. Uh, you know, there was one time, I won't forget, where uh, I was walking through the Welcome Center and I hear a teacher walking by me saying, I'm out of here. I'm never coming back. I'm gone. And I thought, what just happened? I went in to find our director, only to find that she wasn't in the office. And I thought, oh no, what's going on here? Then I go downstairs, and as I enter our downstairs classroom, I see our director standing up on top of a table with a broom in her hand. The door to the bathroom is taped, but the tape is bulging like there's something under it. And there was actually towels that were shoved in the crevices of the door, and then it was taped over to seal it. And I thought, what is happening? And when I asked, I was told, well, there's a snake in the bathroom. I thought, a snake? What kind of snake is it? I don't know. I said, do you mind if I look? So I peeled off some of the tape, enough, actually most, if not all of it, uh, around the top and the side so I can open the door. The bottom was still kind of sealed thinking, there's gotta be this horrible, gruesome snake in there that's just terrifying everyone. As I open the door, I see a very long kind of, I guess you'd call it a band snake, uh, not deadly at all. It actually seemed to be more scared than anything else. But as I opened the door and I said, oh, she screamed and said, I'm out of here. And she ran up the stairs. Now, I took a garbage can and I kind of shoot it into the garbage can, picked it up, took it outside, let it loose, and it was probably more scared of its situation there than anything else. But it was um, kind of, I don't mean to say humorous, but it was humorous, the reactions that we have to snakes. Because snakes are something that can be very scary and terrifying. I and mean, we have uh, a couple dangerous ones, at least here in Maryland. Thankfully, you haven't seen them around you yet. But snakes are something I think that often cause us a lot of fear, a lot of trepidation, a lot of anxiety. If there's a snake, we're going to get away from it. We want to look and make sure where is it at, where is it saluted, so it doesn't bite me. Well, that's the story we're going to share today from our Lutheran Hour devotions. Uh, as we had Lutheran Hour ministries for this whole month of May, I want to share with you a devotion that's entitled Jesus Lifted Up. And it comes from the text from John 3, which says, Jesus said, no one has ascended into heaven except he who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son to the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Now, as I mentioned there's a lot of people that aren't very fond of snakes. As a kid, I used to catch them all the time. I catch rattlesnakes because, well, I was not very bright. Luckily, I never got bit. But there's something that I think all of us have a, a keen awareness. Of. Let's keep those away. Even though I don't mind picking them up and carrying them and getting rid of them, we don't want them in our buildings. We don't want them in our lives. And so it seems strange that Jesus brings up in the middle of this deep conversation with Nicodemus about how one is born from above, born again by water and the Spirit. He mentions snakes. Well, if you read the Old Testament stories about how God set his people free from Egypt, you'll see that the Israelites had this pattern. While they were traveling through the wilderness to the new land God promised to give them, they would get cranky and they'd start whining and complaining and whining and complaining. And it happened again and again and again, and God would discipline them. And they would kind of learn for at least a short time and then go back to the same whining and complaining. It was so much better. We'd rather be back in Egypt. We'd rather be back in slavery because it was a whole lot better then. It's like, what is going on with you people? Now, this time, though, that God disciplines them, he does it with snakes. God sent snakes among them. You hear about this in Numbers 21. And people got bit. And really quickly, they cleaned up their attitude. And since God hates having hurt people, he told Moses how to help. He said, make a bronze serpent, a fiery serpent, and put it on a pole. And everyone who's bitten, when he sees it, shall live. So Moses makes this metal snake and stuck it way up high where the whole camp could see it. I mean, imagine it way up, like as high as our steeple is, where the cross is uh, over our church. So everyone could see it. Okay, maybe not that high. That's pretty odd, but high enough that everyone is able to see it. And if anyone got bit by any of these snakes that were venomous and killing people, they could just look at the fake snake on the pole and they'd get better. I mean, it's a pretty weird story, isn't it? 
But when Nicodemus comes to visit Jesus and talk about God, Jesus brings up the story and says that the story is really talking about him. It's pointing to him. That long ago story was a foreshadowing what Jesus would do to save us from sin and death and the devil. He would lay down his life on the cross and everyone who looks on Jesus in faith would be saved and have everlasting life. But snakes, why did it have to be snakes? I mean, think back to Genesis. You got the snake in the, in, or the serpent in the, in the garden, right? That tempts him. And we all have a, a kind of distaste for snakes. Well, it was a fake metal snake God used to heal the bites of the real ones. And it is Jesus who took on our sins upon himself. No more than that, who became sin for us, who destroys the power of evil to kill us. As Paul writes, for our sake, he, who's God, made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. You need to see that fake, fake snake brought healing from the bites of the real ones. The holy God who carried out our, who carried our sins upon himself and nailed them to the cross. He gives healing and life forever, freely. Why? Because he loves us. No one has to work for this or to pay for it anyway, no matter what you might hear from some religions. No one has to try to do certain efforts. No, it's all freely. All we need to do is look to him, trusting him to help us, and he will. And then we will live forever with him, just as he has risen from the dead and will never die again. And so as we hear this text this week, and maybe you've heard John 3, 16 a lot. You've heard John 3, 16 and 17, one of passages. You look back and hear the verses just before that and saying that, you know, when it comes to being born again, it's not what you do. It's not climbing back your mother's womb. It's not going through a process to make it so you would be a child of God. No, God does it. You're simply just told, look to Jesus. Look upon the one who hangs on the cross in your place. Know that you're forgiven. Know that you are made his child through water and of the spirit. Know that you've been born again. You will see the kingdom of God. Know that you are forgiven for everything. You see, the answer to the Old Testament, all the different stories, is all Jesus. It's all meant to point to him. It's all meant to help us understand who we are in him. And it's to give us confidence and hope that we look forward to, even in the face of death and suffering, that there is a resurrection. So whether you like snakes or don't like snakes, I think many of us kind of have a uh, not really a much of a tolerance for snakes in our houses, in the, uh, in the area around our house. It's, the fact is we're not really talking about snakes here. We're talking about the one who gave his life for us. And so don't get distracted from the teaching here. The teaching isn't about whether snakes are good or bad or what happened in our preschool a couple years ago. It's more so that everything that happened in the Old Testament is a, the key to it is Jesus. It all points to him points to him of who he is, who he is for us. So think about this way. Back then in the Israelites, with the Israelites, if they were bit and they decide not to look at the cross, they, not to look at the serpent on the pole, I'm sorry, and they died, would it be their fault? Yeah. I mean, the, the, the promise is there. The gift is there. The miracle healing is there. And so same day today, our role is not to try to convert or try to explain or rationalize to people, especially as we're getting to Trinity Sunday. It's simply to say, look to the cross, look to Jesus, look to the hope, the forgiveness that we have in him. So let that be our proclamation. As I shared last week, the spirit pushed out his disciples. He pushes us out in the world today. What you're going to say, how you're going to explain the questions that come up. I think maybe the good thing about this is not having to explain all the questions in a way that everyone's going to fully understand all the scientific and rational reasons, but more so realize that it's all about Jesus, for he is the name under heaven by which all must be saved. He is our Savior. He is our Redeemer. He is the Lamb of God who takes away our sins and gives us life. So, children of God, look to Jesus. Point others to Jesus. Help them to see the healing that he brings to the venom of sin in the lives of the world. And then live with them with that knowledge and that trust of God's grace for all of us. Let's close our time in prayer if we can, okay? Lord, thank you for taking on my sins and giving me your life. Thank you for Jesus. Amen. Well, have a very good day. Um, I'm gonna try to get sleep one of these days, but in the meantime, have a blessed day. Go out there confident of who you are in Christ and knowing that he has done everything for you. Trust in that, cherish that, and live every day as his child. 
know that I love you and aloha.